here play it can't even it doesn't even start to play ah yeah we have one frame so we have like 0.5 frames hi i'm alex jordan from learn color grading and film simplified.com today we're performing the second test of the new m1 max in order to help you decide which one to get if you decided to buy a new computer or whether you should upgrade at all if you own last year's model. So today we're going to be performing the two most requested tests, denoise and speed warp. So first of all, let's discuss the conditions of the tests. Uh, first of all, all the timelines uh, are 4K, uh, all the clips are 4K with H.264 compression, and there are no optimizations at all in any of the systems. So the timeline proxy mode is off, the render cache is set to none, and the user playback settings are set to automatic and then the end resolve settings. Uh, and we have the latest version of resolve. Keep in mind that these tests are designed to be hard because we're turning all the optimizations off. Now in reality or in real life production, you will use optimizations, which means that these computers will perform much better than these tests, but all of them actually, but uh, these tests are just, um, designed this way in order to push these systems to their limits. So these are the computers that we're going to be testing today. Again, this is last year's uh, M1 model. It's, a 16, it's the one with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. These are two are the new models. These are this year's model. Uh, this is the entry model 14 inch with the M1 Pro chip. This is the entry model, like the lowest uh, model. And this is the top of the line model. This, is, this has the M1 Max chip with 64 gigabytes of memory. So again, the question is, can the models from this year play uh, clips with uh, certain effects in real time that last year models can't? So we're basically comparing last year against this year just to see whether you should be upgrading. So let's start with the speed warp. But first, did you know that you can go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for our free DaVinci Resolve crash course where you can learn the basics of each tab in Resolve? Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. Now let's start with the speed warp test. The timeline that we're testing has three clips on each timeline, so the same clip is repeated three times. All the instances of the clip have been uh, slowed down to 50%, and each one of these clips uh, uses a different method uh, to slow the clip down and make the motion uh, smoother. Uh, so they go from easiest to hardest to play. So let's start with the first one. The first one, of course, in all of them, we're using optical flow. Uh, however, the first one uses, uh, in the motion estimation method, uh, standard faster, which is the easiest one to play. And let's start with the first one, I'll play. And last year model cannot play it back in real time. Yeah, so last year model, this is the M1 from last year, cannot play it back in real time. Now let's move to uh, the base model this year. I'll place the play head at the beginning and play. Again, it's... Uh, basically uh, the same clip exactly it's set to standard faster and let's play and okay now here's the thing well it actually plays it back in real time so we have real time playback of course keep in mind that we're not using speed warp yet out of the clips that we have here only the last test uses speed warp now what we're doing now is that we're using um, a standard faster for motion estimation so this is not very hard but at least this year's base model can play it back in real time while the model from last year can't and of course now if we move to the high-end model so this is the high end from this year I'll move the play hit to the beginning and play and it can play it back in real time with no problem. So this is the first test that we found that the new models can play that the old one can't. So now uh, we'll move to the second clip. The only thing that changed here is with the second clip is that uh, the motion estimation method uh, was changed to enhanced better, which is a bit harder to play. So I don't think last year's model will be able to play it, play, and of course it cannot play it back in real time. Now let's switch to this year's model, base model, play, and again, it cannot play it back in real time. So for the second test, that is a bit harder than the first one. Uh, this year's model, the base model, cannot play it back in real time. And now let's move to the top end model from this year, and I'll place the playhead here, play, and again, it cannot play it back in real time. 
So only the easiest one of these speed changed clips uh, can be played by the new models, but not the old one. But when you come to the second step up, which is the um, enhanced better mode, none of these computers can play back in real time without optimizations or render. And now to the real test that we're here for, speed warp. Can any of these computers, of course the answer is no, because they failed the second one, but I'll just come to the third clip here, hit play, and nothing. It's not even moving. I think it will crash now, so let's just hit stop. It, it couldn't even play. And so now we'll move to uh, the base model from this year. Of course, reminder, all what changed now when it comes to the third clip is that we're actually using speed warp now, which is the kind of thing you want if you're slowing clips down. It's the highest quality thing, it uses AI, and it's the hardest to play. So now we move to the base model from this year, play, it can't even, it doesn't even, Start to play. Ah, yeah, we have one frame. So we have like 0.5 frames at zero. Fr okay, clearly it cannot play it. So now let's move to this year's top end model. Now this is speed warp, play. Yeah, and it can't play uh, speed warp uh, clip 50% uh, in real time. So this answers one of the most important questions, which is. Can the new models play speed warp uh, clips in real time? No, at least when it comes to 4K clips. I haven't tried HD, but based on the fact that these are expensive systems that are really hyped, uh, they should be able to play it slightly better, but even the high-end one cannot play uh, the speed warp in, in real time. Now we'll move to the second test, which is the uh, noise reduction test. Before we start, a note. Um, the question here, or what we're trying to check here, is not how well each one of these systems denoise the image, remove noise from the image. The quality of the denoise effect will be the same because we're using the same software on the same footage. Uh, what we're checking here is smooth playback. So will these computers be able to to play clips with denoise in real time. So let's start with noise reduction. Now, in Resolve, we have two different uh, kinds or types of, of noise reduction. We have temporal and spatial. Now, we will start with the spatial noise uh, reduction because it's the easiest one uh, to play usually. So we have the same clip here repeated uh, six times. The uh, denoise setting changes from one clip to the next. The first one is usually the easiest to play, then the next one is harder, the last one is harder. So let's start. So the first clip uses uh, spatial uh, noise reduction. We have the easiest settings here. So the mode is set to faster, the radius to small, and the threshold is set to 50%. I'll just do this and let's play. And no, it cannot. This is last year's model and it cannot play it back in, in real time. So let's move to the base model from this year. And again, the same clip with the same settings, uh, play. And we're getting 12, 13 frames of playback. Again, it doesn't play it back in real time. And now let's move to the high end model. So the top end model from this year. And let's play. And we're getting 22, 21 frames. So still not real time, but it's uh, it's better than the other two. So yeah, when it comes to the easiest settings for spatial, none of these computers can play it back in real time. Now, let's move to the second test just to see what happens. So the second clip here is the same as the first clip. The only difference is that it's a bit harder because we increased the threshold to 100. So let's make it full screen, play, and as expected, it cannot play it back in real time. Let's move to the base model this year and play it back and it's actually 12 frames per second. Again, not real time. Let's move to the, let me just remove the timeline here to make things a bit easier. And let me just uh, make it full screen and uh, let me make sure that I'm on the correct, oh, I did not move to the second test here and play and 21 frames. It's very close to real time playback that, so the counter here says 21 frames per second, but if you look at it, it's pretty acceptable when it comes to playback. Remember, this is playback with no optimizations at all. And the last test with spatial noise uh, reduction is this one. It's uh, the third 
clip here and it's basically the hardest test because we switched the mode to better and the radius to medium and we set the threshold to 75%. So let's start with this one, last year's model play and we're basically getting like four frames per second. Let's check uh, this year's entry uh, model play and we're getting still four, five frames per second, so slightly better. Then let's uh, check the high-end model from this year. Let me make sure that we're playing the same clip, yes. Play and we're getting like eight frames per second. Still not real time. So at least when it comes to uh, spatial noise reduction, none of these computers can play uh, a 4K clip on a 4K timeline. Uh, you know, with full resolution uh, and, and, you know, apply uh, noise reduction in real time. So next, let's move to the clips with the temporal uh, noise uh, reduction. So let's start with the first one. It's, again, the easiest settings. So we're telling Resolve to look only at two frames. Yeah, so because it, it analyzes multiple frames to remove the noise. So two frames only. And uh, the motion estimation type is set to faster and the threshold to 50. So... This is the easiest one when it comes to uh, the temporal noise reduction play. Last year's model, we're getting nine frames per second. And let's move to the entry model from this here, play and we're getting, oh, for some real time playback, 23.976, great. So at least when it comes to temporal noise reduction, this, this is good news because this is the type of noise reduction we use most of the time. Uh, basically, it's uh, the entry model from this here can play a 4K clip on a 4K timeline uh, on easy settings, but it's still like uh, real-time playback. We're getting 23.976 frames, which is great. So I guess here when we move to the high-end model and try to play it, I think it will also, yeah, play back in real-time, no issues at all. It's playing this clip in uh, real-time. So, good news. We have, now we have... Uh, when it comes at least to temporal noise reduction, these two computers are very impressive, the new ones, because remember, we're playing uh, 4K clips on 4K timeline, uh, on 4K timelines, and it's like basically uh, real-time playback. Now let's move to the second uh, test, which is a bit harder. Now, the only difference is we're telling Resolve uh, to look at five frames, remember? Um, Temporal noise reduction looks at multiple frames at the same time in order to find the noise patterns and remove them. So all what happened now is that we told Resolve to look at five frames instead of two. Full screen, full screen, full screen. And let's start with the first one is last year's model. And we're getting uh, six frames per second. Now, this is a test I'm really excited about because, <laughs> I mean, five frames isn't exactly easy, so I hope these two can play it in real time because this is the most important type of noise reduction play. And for the entry model this year, we're getting about 14 frames per second, 15 frames per second, so unfortunately, not real time playback. Again, I say unfortunately because we're just trying to test these systems. In reality, with any form of optimization, you will be able to get all of these machines to play it in real time. So let's move to the uh, high end, the top end model from this year, play, and we're getting oh, real time playback. Okay, this is extremely impressive, uh, frankly. Like, this computer here is playing temporal noise reduction, looking at five frames at the same time, analyzing the noise uh, with uh, a threshold of 50%, and it's playing it back in real time without any issues. Look, we're getting full, uh, like, real-time playback. This is extremely impressive for <laughs> the new model, the top-end model, frankly. So, uh, let's move to the last test, which is the hardest test of all of the uh, clips we, we played earlier. And the difference is we changed the motion estimation type to medium and the threshold to 100. So, five frames, uh, medium and 100. This is extremely hard. And of course, I'm not expecting last year's model to play it back in real time, but let's try. Okay, it says four frames per second. Then let's move to the base model this year. Try to play the same clip and we're getting 12 frames per second, which for these settings is still impressive, frankly, with no optimizations at all. So all hopes are on this one now. Three to one, play. 
and we're getting 19 frames per second, which is still extremely impressive, 19, 20 frames per second. It looks on the screen here as if it's in playing back in real time, but the counter shows 19 or 20, but it's applying really hard noise reduction. So we're applying five frames with a medium uh, motion estimation and uh, the threshold at 100, and we're getting uh, 19 frames. I would say this is extremely impressive for the new one. This is like a real difference. Uh, you know, than the other ones. It's very close to real-time playback. So I'm torn here because I think a lot of people are watching these videos to decide what should they buy. So, first of all, for the speed warp test, all the computers couldn't play uh, the speed warp test in, in real time at all. Uh, of course, with maximum uh, settings and like, uh, it's, it's a very hard test to play. Yes, this computer played certain loads of, um, of noise reduction faster than the other two. But the other two can totally play uh, these uh, same tests if you render cache, if you lower the resolution, if you use an HD timeline, they can totally do the same. So it's better, however, this one you can get for like, I think $1,400, $1,300. This one is for $5,000. So which one of these two things would you like to do? Would you like to do some optimizations and learn to use Resolve properly? Or would you like to pay an extra, I'm bad at math, uh, $3,500? Uh, that's up to you. That's not a decision for me to make, but I just wanted to clarify that that's my opinion. For the majority of starting filmmakers, uh, my opinion still did not change. Last year's model, still extremely powerful. I think what happened here is that Apple made the M1 extremely powerful and extremely good to the point where it's very hard to justify uh, the new models, you know, except for certain kind of people. I'm sure there are always someone who is willing to pay the extra for the extra, like, 5 or 10% performance. Now, please keep in mind, I'm only talking about DaVinci Resolve, uh, and we're only discussing the certain tests that I've done so far. If there are any more tests that you would like to see, please uh, leave uh, a comment uh, uh, in the comments section. And if you like this, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve Crash Course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com